It is 9.30 on the dot. Opening bell live look at the New York Stock Exchange uh, here on your Tuesday. The big number today is the inflation number that came out for January. Prices coming in at 6.4 percent uh, year over year. Uh, if you're wondering uh, in terms of inflation and in, in, in the jump there, that is a decrease in 0.1 percent. That is what economists had predicted. Uh, but again, not much of a drop, you could you could say, especially when you talk about interest rate hikes, et cetera. Yeah, if you're looking at sort of a chart that's tracking the inflation month over month, uh, it's stayed about the same right now. Peter Morisi is an economist and professor of business at the University of Maryland and is with us now. Peter, welcome. 6.5 percent in December, 6.4 percent for January. Is inflation here to stay? Well, if we look at things the way they are now, yes. Uh, it's one thing to get inflation from 10 percent to 6 percent, or uh, the monthly number was a half a percent. So, you know, that's that you extrapolate that out. We're talking about 6, 7 percent a year. It, it's another thing to get it down to two. Uh, simply, there's a lot of embedded inflation expectations in the economy. Wages are rising rapidly. You know, we hear all of, from, from folks who want us to stop raising interest rates that, well, goods prices aren't rising anymore. Go to the grocery store. Yesterday, I went to Trader Joe's and bought a, a bottle of what used to be two buck chucks. Last month, it was four dollars. This month, it's five. Uh, and it's that way on just about everything. Uh, food prices are just jumping along. Uh, so we're in, we're in the soup. Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, you can come out and take these numbers, and, and really anyone can. You could skew it in any way you'd like and make the numbers work for you in terms of messaging. But the bottom line is the message when you walk through that grocery store that the everyday American is seeing. And when they're trying to buy goods for their family, when they're trying to make their same dinners, but it's costing them more, we're watching the Dow seemingly respond uh, down to it or points and more uh, in the red. It's only open for a couple of minutes here. Uh, just a quick look at that piece. Peter, is this a reaction from uh, inflation or what the Fed may do yet again? What do you think that well, is? Well, I think it's a reaction. If you look at the numbers piece by piece, not the aggregate number, you can see that inflation is fairly embedded. Uh, energy prices did go up, and that has something to do with it. But the core, I mean, there's a lot of services that, are, that continue to rise in price. Uh, Non-durable goods are, are going up a lot. So that... You, you see that it's in many, many sectors of the economy. Once inflation gets going, it metastasizes, much like a cancer. And, and it's very tough to knock out. Unfortunately, the Fed let things get out of hand, and, and now we're in this situation. Uh, but Joe Biden is not going to be a happy man the second half of the year, because he's going to have one heck of a recession on his hands, or he's going to have continued inflation. Hmm. He's not the only one who might not be so happy right now. Uh, the top folks at AT&T uh, are now seeing oh, an impact on their people. stock. I know I just wanted to show you this. AT&T stock losing $10 billion in value after Newsmax dropped. Peter, tell me about this headline here. What's the real world impact of the decision to drop Newsmax from its lineup? Well, it's an example of what's going on at universities where conservative thought is just not allowed. Uh, it, it's, it's considered immoral to be a conservative. This is a terribly heinous act. My feeling is that any American that consciously owns AT&T stock is, is really, you know, against our Constitution, you know, freedom of speech and so forth. The cable networks often have a monopoly in their neighborhood uh, and, uh, you know, on cable, that is, and, and on, on, on good Internet access. And for them to do this is really, you know, let me put it to you this way. Owning AT&T stocks is about as moral as contributing to Putin's war fund. The words of Peter Morisi, we appreciate your time, sir, and weighing in. Good to see you. Thank you, Peter.